Hello, my friend, Simon from What Culture here, and straight away, you can already hear that I'm struggling with my voice. I don't know how these lights are going to work, but you may also notice I have a black eye. Now, this is why we're not going to do dress ups and downs today. We're going to give it a little bit of a break. So I have dressed up Simon Miller the wrestler. I went to Austria and somebody kicked my ass. And when I was out there, you can bet everything. I did sit down and watch WWE Crown Jewel, the latest Saudi Arabia premium live event. And I tell you this, the last couple of them have actually got quite good. Let's up those doubts. Right, so some people have come up to me, not really, but they just so on Twitter and gone, I didn't really like Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Now, of course, you're allowed to have this opinion and I respect it, but when it comes to my stupid head, I thought this was great. I would say this was just like two freight trains going at each other, but it kind of wasn't. Instead, it was like Bobby Lashley was an absolute monster and Brock Lesnar was a child. And after they did go tet for tet in the beginning, Bob got super pissed off and beat Brock so bad, I started screaming from my hotel room, which makes it even more weird. Stop, stop, he's already dead. Lastly, also focused on Brock's leg. And once again, we have to talk about how good Lesnar is at selling. I would put him in the top five ever. And I'm not joking, but once again, Lashley didn't care. So they spilled to the outside. He saw Brock Lesnar teetering and tottering. And he just speared him through Barry Barricade. Now, of course that hurt me, because you can go thousands of miles across the earth somebody is still attacking Bazaar. Now, yes, look, we do do that spot a lot, but when it's big men slapping man meat, I think it always works. And even though Lesnar did get a couple of German suplexes in there, he also hit Lashley with the F5. Also like, <laughs> you ain't beating me, farm boy. He got his shoulder up. It also led to Bobby just throwing Brock all over the place. I swear he went into Rita the ring post at one point before he applied the hurt lock. Now, do not forget, we are talking about Brock Lesnar here. And he was in this hole for so long, the referee walked up to him and he went one with the hand, he went two with the hand, and he was going to go three. All of a sudden, Lesnar fired up like he had all the energy on Pluto, I don't know what that means, but he still couldn't get out of the hurt lock. So clearly, he's been watching the WWE Network because he maneuvered them over to the turnbuckle. He pushed off it, if you can believe this. Basically, kind of, but not really, but you've got to give this to me. Beat Bobby Lashley with the most devastating <laughs> move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up. I mean, my voice even squeaked. Even in defeat, though, everyone is still going to be like, <laughs> this Bobby Lashley, especially because afterwards, he put Brock Lesnar back in the hurt lock because he was so mad he got defeated. Now, I'm sure we're just doing this because we're going to set up a third match between the two, probably at WrestleMania. But if you wanted to, you could also use it to turn Bob heel. Either way, I thought this was absolutely brilliant. It was so damn fast. It was so much fun. I'm giving it that. Quick interview with Alexa Bliss and Oscar after this, or Aloska. <laughs> I'm going to lose my job. And even though they were all like, oh man, we're going to retain the tag team titles later, the main purpose of this is that one of Bray Wyatt's spooky dookie things appeared on the screen, and it kind of made Alexa go, oh, what is that? Michael Cole even referenced this, so we should probably put that in our back pocket, especially because the next match was Io Sky and Dakota Kai taking on these two for the Women's Tag Team Championships. And these belts changed hands again. And so this was really fun and everyone deserves huge credit here. And I just can't get away from the fact in my tum tum that it feels like Naomi and Sasha Banks are about to return to get what they believe is theirs, the Tag Team Championships. And it just makes more sense if you do it against damage control. When you do hot potato the belts, man, I don't know. I just don't like it all that much because now it feels like we change them on Raw just so we the fans can go, oh, see, you've got to watch every single episode because you just don't know. And then we did it in Saudi Arabia because on these shows, we don't rarely change the belt. So now we've diminished the two because we didn't focus on one. Otherwise, they did just go from one pairing to the next pairing to the next pairing to the next pairing. And they all do have such good chemistry. And at one point, EO Sky hit this springboard drop kick thing onto Oscar, who was on the top rope. I was like, man, we need to be singing about these kind of moves more. Nowadays, you have to do a 920 with a flip and a tuck and a ubi jubi to get any kind of reaction. But this was still pretty bonkers. The subsequent attack also saw Oscar tweak her knee a little bit. My word. Dakota Kai was on that like it was a free ticket to New Zealand. I don't know why I said that. It doesn't make any sense. Dakota probably doesn't even want to go to New Zealand right now. 
I'm an idiot. It all led to the big tag for Alexa Bliss, who ran in there and she went wild. She hit the code red for a near fall. And of course, she then did some wrestling match and said, well, I'm one, you're two, she's three, and she's four. So they did the Tower of Doom spot because, of course. The tag tracks and then went off, so everybody was in the ring going nuts. And the person that suffered from this the most was the referee, because he didn't know what the flub was going on. Which meant Alexa was ready to hit the Twisted Bliss. Went from nowhere. Who, I suppose, has aligned herself with Bailey after they had that chat on Raw? That's right, it's Alexa Bliss's old best friend, Nikki Cross. She beat her up. She hit what I believe was the ego trip off the top rope. That doesn't mean she came down and go, oh, I'm the best. And then Dakota saw this, she's like, all right. She pinned her. One, two, three. Brand new tag team champions. So again, this was very entertaining, and I do like the way we've inserted Nikki Cross into this, so I am going to give it an up. Don't particularly like the quick title change, so I'm going to give it a down. And also, this is definitely a distraction finish. So whack another one on there. I'm not going to lie to you either. Totally forgotten what the total is. I have lost track. Logan and Jake Paul then arrived, and I was like, well, I hope somebody has found them because they're clearly really late to Crown Jewel. Although I also couldn't help but think to myself, man, these Paul brothers have really smashed it. Next up was our still cage match, and I tell you, knowing what I do know, knowing now, which I didn't know at the time, this was basically incredible. Because it has now come out that Drew McIntyre was fighting a flu so bad he was told, look, you shouldn't come to Saudi Arabia, Drew McIntyre, it's not worth it. But because he is the Scottish warrior, he was like, no, I've got to do the cage match. So he did. Fair play to that guy. I also imagine he wanted to get his win back against Karrion Cross, which he did, spoilers, not really, because this whole thing is one big spoiler. And I will tell you this. This is the first time I've watched a steel cage match after I, too, had a steel cage match. That's right, I'm talking about wrestling again. What an absolute dick. So when I did see both guys throwing the other one into the steel, this was like twice as bad. Because I tell you, you may think it hurts, and then somebody does it to you, you're like, yeah, I never want to do that again. Really, this was just the usual spots you would expect from these two, but it was intense, and there was growling, and there was crying, there was no crying. And the only real silly bit was when we got towards the end, because Drew McIntyre was about to hit the Claymore, when Scarlett just got in the cage and said, no, I don't think you should do that. Now, do not forget, the whole point of this stipulation is to keep people out. <laughs> She's just walking in. Cross then smacked McIntyre and started to climb, and that made no sense, because the whole time people were like, oh, man, I'm going to destroy you, Drew. And now he was trying to run away, although this did not work out for the man, because McIntyre caught him and gave him this pretty crazy superplex. This is when Drew McIntyre basically had the thing one after he did hit the claypool kick, but then just as he was trying to leave, Scarlet was back and she just went shh and she sprayed that pepper spray in him and the referee's face again and she locked the door and she took the key. So Drew McIntyre just went, all right, well, I know the rules. Ow, my eyes hurt. And he climbed up to the cage and he won. And the whole time Scarlet was like, oh, no, what have I done? And she was trying to unlock the door. Of course, it was too late. What a stupid move. So that really was kind of dumb when you think about it, but I thought this was much better than their first encounter. <laughs> tell you, they really kicked each other's ass. It does beg the question what we're going to do for round three, because we've already done two stipulations. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. I quit the creative team in 1997. Give it enough. The bloodline without Sami Zayn then also arrived at the event, so they should be fined even more than the Paul brothers, because they are super duper delayed. When Byron Saxton was there, it was all like, can somebody please talk to me about the Logan Paul lucky punch? And Ryan was all like, hey, you get out of here. Apparently he's Italian now. Paul Heyman did say it doesn't matter because Logan means nothing. It's very familiar to me. I hear it every day. This is when the Judgment Day came out, though, to take on the OC. And I just have to tell you this. The Judgment Day right now are better than ever. The OC have found their legs again. And I just thought this was a terrific triple threat tag team match. It also set everything up for the future. I kind of feel even stupid walking you through this one because I know what you want to talk about. And I know what you want me to talk about because, yes, at some point during this, Michael Cole decided he was going to enjoy his new freedoms and he referenced da, 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 the Bullet Club. Now, I don't think this is as nuts as some people have made out because the Bullet Club is basically associated with New Japan. WWE doesn't seem to be too mad at them. But my word, did it really show how much we have changed? We now talking about the BC. The highlight for me was absolutely when AJ Styles and Finn Balor were going at it because it's just something about those two fighting that does make me feel all good deep down in my tum tum. And at one point, Gallows and Anderson got in there and they're like, "We're like the fire brigade. We're how to put out the smoke." They took everyone down. You do know the deal with all of this, though. It's been a story for a while. And I hope it continues to be a story. 
They do have a problem, and it comes in two words, Rhea Ripley. So as soon as all this shenanigans was going on, she picked up AJ Styles, she threw him into the ring apron, which turns out is the hardest part of the ring. Finn was like, thanks, love. And he came off the top rope, he hit the coupe de gras, and he just beat him. One, two, three. I love their shibby and grins. Also put it down, definitely distraction finish. I think I said otherwise somewhere because I'm an absolute goober. <laughs> I couldn't figure out who was going to come back to beat up Rhea Ripley. But of course it's going to be Beth Phoenix. But that works for me. Although Rhea Ripley should beat her. And then she should beat Gunther. And then she should beat Roman Reigns. And she should just be all the champions. I'm only 62.8% joking. I love this feud. Up. And then we kind of got the first match again. You know what? Good. Because it didn't go too long. And Omos just kicked Braun Strowman's ass. And once more, this was just big men slapping man meat. And we tried to get across the fact that while Braun is pretty big, he's not a giant like Omos. I mean, at one point, he grabbed him and built him around the ring. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Braun did look like a right idiot straight away because Omos was like, let's do a test of strength. And he thought he could win it, which he could not. And I will say, when all was said and done here, I thought Braun Strowman and Omos both walked away in a better place than they were originally this match must have worked. It was proper one-upmanship too, because even though Strowman was able to slam Omos, he had to use two arms like some kind of loser, whereas when Omos did it, he did it with one. And I think this is why I got into it, because again, Braun Strowman ain't some kind of shrimp, is he? But here, he just got killed. Even when he went for his choo-choo chain run, he just hit Omos. It's like, what are you trying to do? Hug me. This is a waste of time. When they did go back in the ring and Omos went for the tree slam, Braun Strowman got out of it and he hit the power slam, which once again was impressive. And even though he beat him, did it really feel like Omos lost? I would say no. So this was probably Omos's best match so far. And as I've said before, Strowman is having a great time ever since he came back to the WWE. So I really don't think you could have done this any better. And when you get to that juncture, give it a up. And then the Usos defeated the Brawling Brutes. Face it, this is never going to be bad, is it? The only worry is that apparently, maybe rumouredly, we don't know, Jay Uso legitimately broke his wrist during this, although of course we could be being worked. And I really hope that's not true and somebody else takes the injury for him. Of course, I don't mean that. And it's an impossible thing to happen. But I'm so desperate to see what's going to happen with Jay Uso and Sami Zayn. I don't want anything to interfere with it. So if you were planning to interfere, go and do something. The Usos also looked like they wanted to leave at the beginning here. They were like, well, we may have flown over to Saudi Arabia, but it doesn't mean we have to have a match. But of course, Butch is crazy, so he cut them off, which is when Rich Holland came in as the power. It's one of the reasons this team works. There was also a tribute to Sheamus as we did the beats of the Bodran, whatever the hell that thing is called. Apparently, I get it wrong every week, but I don't actually care. And this is when we did stamp on Jay Uso's wrist, which was also meant to be, how dare you do that to our Irish friend? And look. Jay did work the rest of the match and he looked okay. We've got to keep an eye on it. There was then super kicks, moonsault splashes that got reversed into triangles and who knows what else. Plus we had a great near fall when Jimmy and Jay came off with a double splash, but the brawling boots were able to break it up. Rich also used the white noise for another false finish. And I was like, all right, pal, maybe you're taking this a little bit too far. And when Butch got back in the thing and decided to go and play around on the top rope, he didn't see the fact that Jay Uso had tagged Jimmy, which meant he was in no man's land and he got hit with an avalanche 1D. Straight away, you're like, well, he ain't kicking out of that. And he didn't. One, two, three. This was so good, I could have taken another five minutes here, and I actually think it would have kept getting better. I suppose that probably is the end of this program, but maybe not. Once again, you give it to me for a second time, I will not complain. Give it in now. The Bailey versus Bianca Belair Raw Women's Championship last woman standing match came after this, and I tell you, fair play to these guys. They totally smashed it. Now, I couldn't have been more wrong here, because if you did watch my crown Shaw predictions, I was all like, oh, well, hello there. I think Damage Control will not win their titles back, because Bailey's going to win this one. <laughs> it was actually the complete opposite. So once again, am I a fool? Yes. And I may as well have said Alama was going to win the belt. I would have been as close to my actual prediction. And even though we have had a lot of last man or last woman standing matches recently, the reason this worked so well is because of the intensity. Like we had kendo sticks, which of course are native to under a wrestling ring, we had tables and we had chairs, and we had the who else what else. But every time they went to do anything, they did it with so much ferocity. I was like, oh man, that like it hurt. Barry Barricade was also being used again, and Bianca Belair suplex bails onto the entranceway. 
This is when Bailey was like, oh no, my knee, my knee really hurts. And you could just tell this was a ruse, but because Bianca is a nice person, she kind of tried to dance around it. Bailey beat her up. She also threw a chair at the championship's head, which started this proper unleash movement, because she trapped Bianca using Simba the Still Steps. And she just got that kendo stick, and my word, did she hit her. You always know you're going to get bigger and bigger things in this kind of a match. We started to use flight cases before, once again, we got out the golf cart. So I don't know what the deal is, but any time the WWE tries to use this vehicle, it doesn't go well. And while Bianca and Bales did have some fun here, at one point it was kind of meant to hit Bailey. But it didn't really look like it that match, it kind of just grazed her. When Bianca was done with that, though, she just powerbombed Bailey right into the floor. Once again, I was like wrestlers. They don't care about their own backs. There wasn't every chair you've ever seen in your life. Like you were probably sat in your lounge going, wait a minute, I swear my ass was in that thing. Where the hell did it go? And this is when Belair busted out a 450. And don't forget, it's ridiculous she's able to do a 450. <laughs> then she grabbed Bailey and she gave her that KOD into the upright chair. Honestly, that is the worst thing ever. Bianca quickly realized that she had wounded Bailey though. <laughs> so we got to one of these absolutely over the top endings. Because basically what Bianca Belair did is, she got a ladder and she used the ringside area to kind of trap Bailey against the ring as if it was a wall. Even though the whole time you're like, Bailey, I think you can stand up from that. I guess she didn't want to. And with Kevin Owens, he's probably laughing. So it's a bit like having a ball competition and wearing a wig, but don't worry about the finish when the journey was so good. I think this was easily the highlight of the entire feud. And I suppose now it probably is going to be Bianca Belair versus Bailey versus Nikki Cross. So at least that keeps it somewhat fresh, but seriously, it is getting an up. It's one of the best matches on the show. And then we had some Bray Wyatt stuff. Okay then. This was basically just a way to get Bray on the show because he is a megastar now. And the last time he was here, he was losing to Goldberg. And he just did his usual old shtick going, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, but I must return to WWE because I want to rewrite my own ending. Yeah, he lost to Goldberg. Every time this does happen, it seems like Bray Wyatt's about to have a breakthrough. But of course, then on the big screen, Unky Howdy appeared. He was all like, ah, ah, Bray, you're an absolute moron. You're right, nobody does like you, and this is why you're going to turn to the duck side. Come give me a hug. He also kept screaming, do it, like he was Ben Stiller in Starsky and Hutch. I know I've said it once, I've said it twice. I'll say it 97 times. Bray Wyatt is actually feuding. <laughs> with Bray Wyatt. There's also so many rumors and murmurs about this and Bray Wyatt's merchandise sales right now are number one, so he's absolutely smashing it. And yes, there's every chance that Howdy over here could be Bo Dallas, which would make my day. But don't you love the fact that we can come up with all these crazy theories? That's what wrestling can be about. It doesn't always have to be about a promo or about a match. Sometimes you can just come up with some fun stuff. Get it up. And then we arrive. Nope, I never believed these words were going to come out of my mouth, and yet they have done in 2022. Because the WWE Undisputed World Championship was on the line, and it was Roman Reigns taking on Logan Paul, and it was flubbing great. And that's not just because Roman is brilliant, and oh my gosh, he was so damn good here, but it is time we take our flowers and give them to Logan Paul. Because I don't care how long he's been training, I don't care who he's been training with. This is only his third match, and it was on a mega dega stage. Honestly, the dude is just so good at pro wrestling. But you just have to watch it for the awesome buckshot lariat he pulled off. You have to watch it for the awesome leapfrog and crossbody he did. And you especially have to watch it when he climbed to the top rope as Roman Reigns was lying on Alan the announce table. And he selfie videoed himself doing a splash from there onto the head of the table. Seriously, it was absolutely excellent. I don't even know what to do. We also did all the punch stuff because yes, Logan Paul hit Roman with that big shot. And even though he was able to kick out, he then sold it for the entire match. But like I say, he was on fire as well. And when the Usos came out, they were taken on by Jake Paul. And all I'm going to say is this. A lot of people are like, oh man, Jake Paul's real fights are all works. Well, if that is the case, Someone needs to tell him how to throw a work punch. He also came out to that stupid song he wrote a few years ago called Every Day Bro or something. And listen to how good the lyrics are. Two months ago you didn't know my name, but now you want my fame. Bitch, I'm blowing up, I'm only going up. Now I'm going off, I've never fallen off. That's incredible, because he's rhymed up with up and off with off. So as Akoa soon joined in, but Jake Paul wasn't allowed to touch him because he's still fresh and we're trying to treat him like a beast. And this is when Logan Paul came over the top and he just took everybody out. Once again, it was just so damn smooth. 
Fight my head. Sadly, it did mean he forgot about our tribal chief, though, and he got back in the ring, and he got Superman punched, and Roman hit him with the spear for the one, two, three. But this did no harm to Logan Paul. Very sad, like, it sounds like he got injured during this. He tore his MCL and his meniscus. But when he does come back and he does this again, I tell you, man, the sky is the limit for this guy to the point that when you take everything in context and you think about it, there's only one thing we can do. There's only one fair thing we can do, and this is a fair show, despite what some people think. It doesn't just get an up. It gets a golden up. It's only his third damn match. Which brought us to the end of Crown Jewel. And yes, over the last couple of shows, I think WWE realized they don't want it to be a glorified house show. So now it actually is a barrel of laughs, which is also kind of difficult for your brain, of course, because of the Saudi Arabia stuff. We've talked about it. We'll leave it for now. Getting it up. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's Crown Jewel or the other night's Crown Jewel, whenever the hell it was this weekend. is absolutely nuts. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to worldculture.com where we keep you up to date with the fallout. Make sure you come follow us on social media. We have lots of other videos. Go watch one. My name is Over World Culture. Thank you very much for watching me as always. You take care. Voice is definitely going to go. Goodbye.